Greetings! This recording covers the second part of the lesson on basic terms in research and statistics. At the end of this lesson, you must have described basic terms in research and statistics. In common usage, statistics is a plural form of the word statistic that means a numerical information. But as a field of study, Lin, Marshall, and Mason define statistics as the science of collecting, organizing, presenting, analyzing, and interpreting data to assist in making more effective decisions. In support, Mendel Hall and Sinsic define it as the science of data. The study of statistics is divided into two categories, descriptive and inferential. Definitions coming from different authors are presented to ensure consistency. Descriptive statistics, according to Lind et al., refers to the methods of organizing, summarizing, and presenting data in an informative way. Mendel Hall and Sinsic defined it as the branch of statistics devoted to the organization, summarization, and description of datasets. Inferential statistics, according to Lind et al., refers to the methods used to describe something about a population based on a sample. Consistently, Mendel Hall and Sinsic define it as the branch of statistics concerned with using sample data to make an inference about a large set of data. Inferential statistics is also referred to as statistical inference and inductive statistics. In inferential statistics, these two terms were mentioned, population and sample. I am presenting two definitions with slight difference. Lind et al. define population as a collection of all possible individuals, objects, or measurements of interest, while Mendelhall and Sinsic define it as a data set, usually large, sometimes conceptual, that is the target of interest. The difference in their definitions is that Mendelhall and Sinsic only covers a portion of the definition of Lind et al., which is population refers only to a certain measurement of interest. For the sample, Lind et al. define it as a portion or part of the population of interest, while Mendel Hall and Sinsic define it as a subset of data selected from the target population. Although their definitions are similar, it is affected, however, by how they refer to the word population. From the two definitions, I prefer the definition of Lind et al. because Mendel Hall and Zinzik introduced another term to cover the entire definition from the former. That term will be introduced later. There are misconceptions on these terms. This could even cause challenge in defending a research before a panel. Based on the definition, it is very clear that a population is a set, hence there is a need for you to clearly define what your target population is. Let us consider an example that involves students. We cannot simply say students is the population. You need to be more specific as to what are included in this student population. Does it include students around the world enrolled to any course and any tertiary education? Or you are referring to those students in Bachelor of Science in Information Technology at ESAT Yumigao campus officially enrolled in academic year 2021-2022. There is a need to mention the academic year if your results would only cover them. If you fail to mention the academic year, it may be construed to include those who graduated or dropped from the program. Assuming that your population is any student. Samples include students who are currently enrolled, students who dropped, students who graduated, students from the Philippines, students from special education, students in third year level, female students, and so on. 
If your population is ISAT UMIAGAW BSIT students officially enrolled during the academic year 2021-2022, then samples include male or female ISAT UMIAGAW BSIT students officially enrolled during the academic year 2021-2022. First year, second year, third year, fourth year, or fourth year, ISAT UMIGAW BSIT students officially enrolled during the academic year 2021-2022, etc. But your results cannot speak about those who were enrolled in any other academic year. However, it is possible that your sample includes all students of ISAT UMIGAW BSIT students officially enrolled during the academic year 2021-2022. If your population is ISAT UMIAGAW BSIT students regardless of the academic year or BSIT students officially enrolled during the academic year 2021-2022 regardless of school. It is even possible that your population is only third year section A of ISAT UMIAGAW campus BSIT students officially enrolled in quantitative methods during the first semester academic year 2021-2022, but your results may not speak of those coming from other sections or those of the same specifications except the semester they were enrolled. Another example, your population may only be quiz 1 scores of third year section A of ISAT UMIAGAW campus BSIT students officially enrolled in quantitative methods during the first semester academic year 2021-2022 or weekly allowance of third year section A of ISAT UMIAGAW campus BSIT students officially enrolled in quantitative methods during the first semester academic year 2021-2022 leaving outside UMIAGAW. When confused, just review the topics on sets. In the previously mentioned terms, we observe slight difference in the definitions of population. The difference presented another term, the experimental unit. As I mentioned, Mendel and Sinsik covered only the measurements in the definition of population, but from which the measurements are obtained, they refer it to experimental unit. Again, I prefer the definition of Lind et al. for the term population because it already includes the source of the measurements. Another term is a variable. Mendel and Sinsik define it as a characteristic or property of an individual experimental unit, while Lind et al. define it as a characteristic or attribute being studied. Again, the difference is because of their definition of the term population. In computer programming, variable holds values. It means the term data refers to specific values. If our variable is gender, then the data could be male or female. By the way, data could mean the plural form of the term datum or considered as an uncountable noun. In here, variables and data are sometimes used interchangeably. However, we need to be able to distinguish them in certain contexts. Moreover, when we refer to data here, it is necessary that you include the unit of measurement if applicable. Its importance will be discussed with the succeeding slides. There are two types of variables or data. Lind et al. define qualitative variables as non-numeric. Usually, they are described in the number or percent of the observations in each category. Also, Mendelhall and Sensik define the qualitative variables as those that cannot be measured on a natural numerical scale. They can only be classified into categories. Whereas, quantitative variables or data are usually summarized in graphs and bar charts. They are recorded on a naturally occurring numerical scale. Moreover, they represent the quantity or amount of something. Religion 
degree program, civil status, and favorite color are among the qualitative variables, while number of students, family size, scores, and weight are among the quantitative variables. However, it is possible that the normal quantitative variables be turned into qualitative depending on the values being considered. Example, height is normally quantitative. The measurement is in centimeters. It may be turned into qualitative if the data is based on the classification as short or tall. Take note that you cannot convert qualitative data into quantitative. Even if you use codes to represent certain category, such as 1 for female and 2 for male. These numbers are just code for organization or analysis purposes only. You cannot perform arithmetic to them. Because if you obtained a fractional value for certain computations, what would it mean? Does such category exist if the options are only male and female? Moving further, quantitative variables or data could either be discrete or continuous. Discrete data could be obtained from counting. You could count it in a finite amount of time. Discrete data are not necessarily just whole numbers, like the shoe size of 5.5. It has a fraction, but it is fixed since we do not have 5.55 or even 5.6 shoe size. The next one is 6, then 6.5, 7, and so on. But you cannot divide on them because this credit can assume only certain values and there are usually gaps between values. On the other hand, continuous data are obtained from measurement. It would take you forever to count them, but you could divide them because continuous data can assume any value within a specific range. Examples of discrete data are number of shoes, family size, class size, and score in a quiz, while continuous data include height, weight, and age. Age is strictly continuous, but you could turn it to discrete by taking age in years or in months. What about time? It may take forever for you to count time, but if you consider the clock, it makes time discrete because the clock presents time in hours, minutes, and seconds only. Moving on to another terminology, the levels of measurement. There are also misconceptions of this concept, especially when they use codes for certain values, basically for ease of computations. For any levels of measurement, the common properties are, first, categories are mutually exclusive. It means that an individual or object appears in only one category. Second, categories are exhaustive. It means that an individual or object appears in at least one of the categories. For clarity, let us consider gender as a variable of interest. Usually, gender has two categories, namely male and female. If we get the gender of a certain person, that person should fall either in male or female category and not both. This is mutually exclusive. That person cannot be neither male or female. If you are expecting other categories, they should be included in the selection. This is exhaustive. The different levels of data measurement are nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. First is the nominal level of measurement. Nominal data are sorted into categories with no particular order to the categories. If you sort them alphabetically, the purpose is only for presentation. Nominal data include place of birth, gender, religion, civil status, isatumiagaw, BSIT sectioning. Regardless whether you put male or female first, for gender, it doesn't really matter. 
Second is the ordinal level of measurement. Ordinal data presume that one classification is ranked higher than another. Examples include Likert type scale, skill level as novice, intermediate, and expert, height described as short, average, or tall, IQ classification, and age category. The common issue is on how others classify the Likert type scale. Some consider this to be of the interval data because they use numerical codes to refer to the values such as 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 for strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, and strongly agree respectively. The numbers are just codes. Later on, you will be certain why Likert type scale is not interval data. I gave height described as short, average, and tall as ordinal, but height in certain measurement could be interval or ratio. You will understand it later. The third is the interval level of measurement. This level of measurement has the ranking characteristic of ordinal level plus the characteristic that the distance between values is a constant size. There may be no zero value. If there is, it does not mean an absence of the trait being measured. Going back to the Likert scale as mentioned previously, in the given example, data collected are the following, strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, and strongly agree. The distinguishing characteristic of interval from ordinal is the constant difference between the values. Is the difference between strongly disagree and disagree equal to the difference between disagree and neutral, or the difference between neutral and agree? The difference cannot be certain. The codes 1 to 5 are not the data of interest. Instead, it is agreement to certain statement. Hence, it cannot be interval. However, if Likert scale is used to determine a personality trait, it means the personality inventory is composed of several items, then it may be considered as interval. Again, an individual Likert type question is considered as ordinal, but the data from the overall Likert scale may be treated as interval. Interval data include temperature in Fahrenheit or Celsius, shoe size, test score, and personality inventories. Zero degrees Celsius does not mean an absence of temperature, but the Kelvin temperature scale belongs to the next level of measurement. The last level of data measurement is the ratio. Ratio level has all the characteristics of the interval level, plus there is a meaningful zero point and the ratio of two values is meaningful. The value zero in the ratio means the absence of the characteristic or trait being measured. Ratio data include temperature in Kelvin, age, height in meters, weight in kilograms, household size, and class size. Kelvin temperature scale is the ratio because it has no negative degrees of temperature. Zero here means an absolute lack of thermal energy. Height in meters is ratio because zero means the object has no height and does not exist. Height, described as short, average, or tall, is ordinal because we cannot be certain on the difference between these descriptions. But why would you use those data? if numerical values are available. This marks the end of our lesson on basic terms in research and statistics.